that a thing? Is that? Nah, I think you guys are just making stuff up. What is going on, everybody? He's, mm -hmm. See? See? You're short. You're tiny. <laughs> You're all short. I sabotage you. You're like disappearing in a corner. Disappearing in a corner. There. There. More normal size, maybe. Kind of, maybe, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> what is going on, everybody? Hello. Darkness, what's happening? Houdini. What's going on, folks? Telemachus. Scientologist. Scientologist. Shh. Be careful. Shh. Don't say Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Welcome back, everybody. It's almost the weekend, or I guess it is the weekend, technically. Got a little more work to do. We're going to do a short... Short stream tonight, I think. Mini Jen in the house. Yeah, she got, I don't know what happened. Maybe the I grew. Cam, I wonder if the cam zoom changed. You grew? I changed it so I grew. Oh. Because I was short, but now I'm not. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Hang, hold. I can I can maybe do this. Let's see if I can do this without screwing it completely up like I did the last time and click all the wrong buttons. <laughs> I'm good at clicking all the wrong <laughs> buttons. So uh, that's a thing. You look good, though. Hey. You look all good, y'all. <laughs> you all good looking. I feel like that's not doing it. I feel like that's probably zooming in on me. <laughs> all right. Well, it is what it is right now. That's okay. Jack with it off stream. Otherwise, it looks good. You look good. You look good, girl. Shoot. <laughs> Just turn the stream off and go out to dinner, <laughs> have date night. <laughs> to heck with you people. <laughs> Lazy Dargan, what's going on? It is the weekend or it isn't the weekend? Is that a question mark? It is sort of the weekend, I guess. For some people, I have to go to work on the weekend, though. So I'm always yeah. hesitant to say, like, hey, welcome to the weekend. Woohoo, it's great. Everybody's like, work grumble, tomorrow. grumble, I have to work tomorrow. <laughs> Yell, Drab, what's happening? How do the Ewoks sneak up on Han, Chewie, and Luke? They use their indoor voices. <laughs> Telemachus it's a good thing I like you <laughs> just means Jen has to be on more that way we can help troubleshoot the camera exactly right exactly. that's the only reason people tune in anyway we've had more people show up and go no Jen out of here no Jen out of here old guy what paints well, not interesting anymore of the three days that you stream you're here for thirty three percent of it. I'm here for thirty three percent. Thirty three point three percent of it. <laughs> I've been not even in the house the other. Probably times. actually even longer than that because Tuesday's only two hours. So. Yeah. That makes your Friday three hours more than thirty three percent technically. Oh uh, well, yeah. Don't you know? Okay. Don't you know? Don't you know? But All I right. don't usually stay the whole time. No, she, she she cops out. Which we're both going to cop out tonight. We've got stuff to do. So uh, whenever Jen says it's time, it's time. But we got some stuff to handle first. We're going to be painting a little bit more on our Machine and Krieger combat suit that we got. We'll so if you've been around, uh, I'll walk through all the stuff that we've already oh. done here. Like the texturing like and everything. Lazy Targon. I was just thinking about the ice cream donut. Oh, my God. That would be just so Just thinking about it. That might have to be a thing. It's getting warm here. Getting warm. So ice cream donut can be a thing. Basic, what's going on? Thank you for the follow. So, um, so we'll be working on the Machine and Krieger stick. a little bit. But first, I've got to catch up on some stuff. Uh, so uh, Drago Emo won't be here tonight, I don't think. Uh, Stacy is... Uh, uh, but she fell down on the job on Wednesday. Her, uh, her hubby Luke wanted us to uh, show how to do uh, flesh on... Infinity style figures, meaning the kind of detail and scale that Infinity models come in. This is not an Infinity uh, model, but it is the same scale and detail. And I actually use this as an HVT, a high value target for my Infinity army. Um, so I'm going to paint this because it's the only one that I had that doesn't. I've got a bunch of miniatures here that I'm finishing up for a commission, but all the faces are already painted. So we're going to go through and I'm going to show you what I do for painting these faces, how to get the details set in right and have them look good. Um, so we're going to do that for the first part of the show. We'll talk about that as long as Nesca Scary. Okay, can I ask a question? No. Yes. You said... No. Maybe. What kind of question? It's not about you. <laughs> you said she fell down on the job on Wednesday. Is oh, she yeah. hurt? No, she fell down on her job to tell me that I needed to paint this face on okay, Wednesday. Okay, so I didn't get that. Oh. And I'm imagining her, like, injured. Oh. And that's because you said she's not going to be here tonight. 
Oh, no, she got other important things to do oh, tonight, okay. and she fell down on the job. She sent me a message today saying, hey, you need to paint that face tonight. I go, no, that was actually supposed to be on Wednesday, but since you failed to remind me on Wednesday like you were I supposed see. to, I forgot it on Wednesday I as well, so there you see. go. <laughs> All right, then. Oh, I'm not going to read it, Darkness. I am going to read it. No, I'm not going to read it. I'm it, no, don't, don't no, read it. No, I'm not going to read it. <laughs> not getting bred in captivity. I already, I already know it's horrible. <laughs> you bastages. <laughs> Scientologist, this is a model, I believe, from Wolsong, um, which is a micro art studio thing. Um, they make a game that's kind of a steampunkish game. Uh, but this model was perfect for my uh, my JSA or my Eugene HVT because she's got kind of the the Oriental you know fan, but it has blades on it, kind of a sort of a techie look, and she's got hoses on going in and out of her arm. But she also has elf ears, so it's a little weird. Mm. But uh, it's a great model. Uh, I, I just picked it up because I was looking for HVTs that weren't the the typical, you know, uh, uh, Infinity HVT that you get. So we're going to get started with that. I'm just going to use a uh, trio of colors that we're familiar with. Tanned, Barbarian, and Elven Flesh from the Army Painter is what we're going to use as our triad here. And as you can tell, she's got a little bit of a pre-highlight on her already. Uh, this has been done a long time ago. I just sprayed white over the black uh, primer to get our standard top-down pre-highlight going. I love when you open a bottle of paint and it just all is already out. So you don't even have to squeeze it. It just, you know. That doesn't seem good. It just poops out all over the place. <laughs> Is this a very long braid she has? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's like a very, like a, like a big, yeah, she's got like high a high ponytail braid thing. High, high ponytail, like a top knot yeah. thingy going on. And, and then braid a long comes braid down. to like her waist. Yeah, it comes down to her waist there. She's got a little bit of belly showing. A little bit of cleavage Jeez, showing. Of course. It's objectification. Objectification. A little bit of butt crack back oh, in there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> a little bit of butt crack showing. So disrespectful to women. Is it? I don't know. You dress like this all the time. So I know. I don't, I don't know exactly I know. what the problem is. <laughs> uh, what program do Jedi use to open PDF files? Adobe One. Can, uh, can I just mute him? Is that a thing? <laughs> you do know the game, Scientologist? Yeah, I don't know the game. I mean, we work with MicroArt Studios, but I wasn't familiar with uh, the whole thing from Wolsung. It didn't... Uh, didn't ring a bell when I saw the mini, but I was like, oh, that mini looks like it might work. So here it is being used for another game. <laughs> a lot of their stuff can be used. There's another one that I use as a civilian in Infinity. It is a, um, uh, what is it? I think I already put that out there, didn't I? Yeah. Um, it's like a, a girl with a wrench or something like that. And so I use that as a civilian. I'm always just looking at things because they, you know, last year in the uh, in the Infinity Tournament series, they came out with all these new rules and there were, you know, uh, uh, tournament, um, what am I looking for? Scenarios that uh, required civilian targets and things like that. And, you know, they don't make civilian models. So I was like, well, got to have something. All right, so I'm going to take most of the paint off. I'm using our new debt cord brushes. These are the new synthetic Kalinskis. We're going to paint the whole face with all of our synthetics. If you were watching Kenny earlier, Kenny got his synthetics in today and was using them. What? Speaking of the devil, I feel like that's the devil. What's going on, Kenny? And crew? Hello, hello, hello. I was hanging out with you guys watching Kenny paint his uh, amazing orc from 3D art. 3D art digital or digital art or something like that. It's a big-ass model. Looking very nice. And uh, like I said, Kenny got his debt cords today and was loving the X10, which is the smallest one. It made me feel like I shouldn't have sent him any of the other sizes. Oh. I feel like all he's going to use is the absolute wow. smallest one there is. And he immediately was like, yeah, send us like, you know, a billion of these. <laughs> so I'll take that as uh, he likes it. They are really, really good brushes. Uh, I've been getting asked a lot of questions. Um, you know, normally here on the show and when I paint, a lot of people ask me about, hey, 
Can I use synthetics for the type of work that you do? And in general, my answer has always been a, a resounding no, um, because synthetics don't respond the same way to thin paint that a sable will. Hey, and somebody and likes by the, hey, thank you for the follow. What is going on, Router Mike? Router Mike. Thank you. Great name. Um, a synthetic, generally, the thinner you go with paint on a synthetic brush, the more haphazard the way the paint leaves the brush is. Hey, um, somebody likes us. Comrade, thank you so much. So, uh, like a large synthetic brush, like our synthetic utility brushes, right, are pretty big. Mm -hmm. Synthetic brushes. This one's, good God, the bristles on that one are so stiff. Must clean brushes. Um, so, you know, a large synthetic brush, has, even if it has a lot of hair, the thinner you go with paint, the more it will kind of give like a splotchy... Um, uh, release of the paint onto the model if the if the hair isn't very good, and that's what makes sables such a thing. Like why we even go to natural hair brushes is it for oils, uh, thicker paint styles, dollar, things like that. Dollar, Synthetics dollar. work great. Um, Minceders, thank you for the bits. Uh, thicker paints, uh, synthetics work fantastic. As you start thinking down, they don't have the same retention qualities that natural hair does, and so you wind up with problems. What we've developed is a synthetic Kalinsky in our deck cords, though. Thank you, Necro. Sorry for the sub. Necro! Thank you. Um, with the synthetic Kalinsky that we've got, this hair responds almost identical to uh, a, a natural sable. Thank you for the follows. Welcome, everybody. Thanks, men's a nurse. I am Jason. That over there... That cute one, the good looking <laughs> one, that's Jen. Hey, somebody likes us. And welcome to Slow Fuse Gaming. Cybernetics, I think. Yep. Look at you. Got hey, it on one. Look at me. <laughs> so we're the ones behind the brushes and Gentastic's drunken brush goop. Actually, she's the one behind the brush goop. I got nothing to do with it. I just put it in boxes and mail it to people who are very happy to receive it. I don't do anything with it. She's the, the brain child behind all that good stuff. Voodoo child, that's um, the sub count. And when we get to 20 subs, uh, we do a giveaway. Yeah, every 20 new subs to the channel, we will perform a giveaway. <laughs> I did not bust any moves on the dance floor, but it was really fun. At what, the wedding? The prom. Oh, the prom. Mm -hmm. You didn't bust moves. Nope. Oh, well. There's a story there someplace. Because she's a dancer, this one. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> I tear it up. She is a rug cutter if ever there was one. Is that? Am I able to say that out loud? Minson Nurse, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the sub. Welcome to the snails. Enjoy those emotes. So again, I'm just going with a very, very thin coat of tanned flesh from the Army Painter. I'm letting our underpainting, hey, that pre-highlight, and our black give it a little bit of definition. Hulking Orc. Hulking, Hulking Orc, Doc, what is going Daka. on? Thank welcome, you. welcome. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. <laughs> oh, Unmarshall, or UN Marshall, or... UN Marshall. UN Marshall. Uh, glad to hear you like the soap. That's awesome. And Voodoo Child. It's life changing. I, I don't, I mean, I didn't know that that, if, if that is the case, it was an unintended side effect. What's that? But yay for you. What's that? You said brush goop saved my marriage and made my ding dang bigger. What? <laughs> I thought that's just something I put in all the emails I sent out. <laughs> I thought that was just the advertisement. That was just false advertising. But if it works, hey, more power to you. <laughs> <laughs> made your ding dang bigger. Did he say ding dang? <laughs> ding dang. <laughs> made my ding dang bigger. Saved my marriage and made my ding dang bigger. Welcome to Fridays, guys. Where we lie to you hey, about ourselves. Genuine. Our <laughs> Genuine, did you just walk in on that one? <laughs> Genuine gets to come in on some funny stuff. He's, he brings it up every now and then. He's like, you know what? I show up and you're talking about ding dangs getting bigger. What the hell is going on here? And wait, you were talking and I know I missed well, a couple of those up here. Chocolate Gore, yeah, Bloodbeard, 16 like freaking months. How you doing, my friend? Oh, that was you, Voodoo. Hi. And KTP. What's up? How you doing? KTP? We can guy. use it for our qu a quote for our product. Thank you. <laughs> oh, we can quote you on that? Because I will put that. that. It'll save marriages down. and make your ding dang bigger. <laughs> Expect spam emails incoming. 
<laughs> Jeremiah Thames, thank you so much. Five freaking months. I got you guys blow us away. Thank you so much for the continued support. Welcome, 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 everybody. Hope your week has been good and that you're headed into the weekend with all sorts of good vibes and cool stuff planned. We're going to go see Infinity War, finally. That's our cool thing for the weekend. And we're going to avoid talking to anyone else until then. I haven't I haven't heard anything. I, I haven't been paying well, attention, though. Kid, I mean, kids, but they... Oh, at your school? Yeah, I just am like, don't oh, no. say anything. I didn't even think about that. Those bastages. Yeah, they don't care either. I'm like, I don't want to hear it. They, they don't just care. keep talking. They just keep talking. They don't care. Spoil it all. Goal on the first coat, obviously, anytime you're doing a base coat of color, is just to get a smooth cover that, Move up you know. Just a little bit. What's that? It was, oh, was I out of frame a little yeah, bit? Yeah, a little bit. Um, no different here. Still one more name was asking specifically about skin on Infinity Miniatures. He is painting his first batches of Infinity after having done only primarily 40K. I can't say only 40K, but he's a big 40K player and collector. And so if you're moving from 40K where you've got like heroic style details on faces, big heavy cut jaws and cheekbones and things like that, there's a totally different method. Well, not totally, but there is definitely a, a delicacy um, in the method for painting, you know, these smoother, smaller details inherent to Infinity models versus the 40K heroic looking stuff. So, but for the base coat, this is really simple. Pick a color. I always start with a dark flush, uh, especially the smaller the scale that I work with. It's a lot easier to start with shadow and move up to highlight, in my opinion, than the other way around. But salt to taste. Some people like it the other way around. I'll go ahead and paint some of the rest of the flesh here while I'm still... working with it. Try to keep the first layer pretty thin. Um, if some of the black shows through and it looks a little splotchy on the first pass, that's fine. Like always, what we're trying to do is just get a smooth buildup. We're not so concerned with the first pass covering it and getting skin color on everything at an opaque level, right? Because we want to let, in the case like this where I've done some pre-highlighting, we want to let the highlight and the shade from the black primer and the gray-white that I've got going on on the highlight. We want to have all of that influence the flesh tone any chance we get. So again, thinner the better and just build up as you go. Try not to overwork an area like right here on the side of the belly. See how we're not getting a tremendous amount of flesh color on that? That's fine. We're building up kind of in the center ridge where I'm pulling my brush stroke. So you'll notice I'm coming from the side up towards the front of the belly. So that's where it's depositing most of the pigment. And then same thing over here, I come from the side of the abdomen over towards the front of the belly, and so it brightens up every time I end my brush stroke, but I'm not seeing a tremendous amount of color on the side, and that's fine. Like I said, we're really, our goal on our first pass is just to get a good base coat down, um, and if it doesn't become opaque the way you want it, then that's what the second layer is for. It avoids thickness of paint, it avoids brush texture, it avoids all those annoying things that we get in miniature that can alter the look and feel of the model drastically as we make our brush stroke and thick paint, it starts to look a little funky, so on and so forth. So. Picked of the North, we will ship it anywhere that you need it shipped. Yep. We have people using our shipping. brushes and our brush soap all over yeah. the planet. So, yep, we can definitely ship it to the UK. Not a problem. What a lot of people will do is in their local gaming groups internationally, get a, a group of people to place an order together so that you can share on the shipping. We are currently looking at avenues to provide uh, the rest of world outside of North America 
with less expensive shipping through uh, warehousing in like Europe, but we're a ways off from that still. So we're working on it, but I don't have a good status update for you on that. So right now everything comes from North America, but we will ship it anywhere. Drax said, I'm starting my three-year-old off right and having you teach him to paint as he sits in my lap and wants to watch. I'm telling you, <laughs> watch out, start him young. Hello, hello kiddo. <laughs> start him young. Of course, I think drugs might be cheaper. I jest, but not really. There's that meme that floats around that shows that, you know, everybody uses that, you know, well, at least, you know, your kid's not outside, out doing drugs. Yeah. And the parents are like, it'd be cheaper <laughs> if they were. The big mound of 40K stuff in the closet. <laughs> Airplane model. It works for everything in our hobby. Tanks, airplanes, scale modeling. It's a disease. Move up just a little bit. It's a disease. Right, now that the stomach has had a chance to dry, I come back over the side here. And like I said, we'll get our opacity with the second pass. Then paint, just build it up in layers. Like so. Hi. so now I start getting the flesh tone the way I want it. Now again, I start 99% of my models with black primer. <laughs> so a lot of the methods that you will see me use rely on that as the case. Um, you can definitely do all of this over gray and white primer as well. Um, you just might find that your colors are gonna be brighter. So you might wanna start with a darker flesh tone than I am. Uh, my black undercoat makes this darker than the paint out of the bottle. That doggo cam? Mm -hmm. She's actually letting the cam see her? Well, she I mean, now they can't really. But she. She's smart. She, she knows. came down the runway. She came down, down the runway. Down the catwalk. Well, the dog huzzah, walk. huzzah. I'll just throw back my legs and pollute my britches with delight. Thank Hello. you, Shinkai. Shinkai, seven freaking months. Thank you, my friend. Welcome back. Good to see you. <laughs> What are you doing? She actually exited the house today through the front door when the mailman came. Oh, really? Yeah, pushed right past me, went out and just stared at him. Huh. She only barks until she gets out where the people she's barking at are, and then she shuts up and just stares at them. <laughs> she's like, like not oh, really going to do anything. I'm out in your world now. What do I do? Yeah, she's like, oh, wait a minute. I don't know. Wait. I don't know what this is. I was doing all that bitching, and now I don't know what to do when I actually got I what I feel, wanted. I don't feel like I can protect all of this. <laughs> She's a hoot, all right. Do a second pass on the back side of the cheeks here. What I do after I've got a nice thin coat down on everything is just kind of go back and start looking at the areas where I know it's going to be brighter. So on the face itself, I know that our brightness is going to reside up around the, the cheek, the high cheekbones and the nose. She's got this uh, hair pulled back, although I guess she's got a forehead there. I thought she had like a band on her forehead, but I'm missing that. She does not. So this is actually skin up here. Okay, but even with this darker, this is tanned flesh. It's the darkest flesh that I'll use on this. Now, if you want a darker skin overall, because I'm going to go for a little bit of a pale flesh tone. If you want a darker skin overall, the key is going darker with your base coat. So I would have gone with maybe in terms of like army painter colors, maybe an oak brown, uh, Vallejo chocolate brown. Those colors work very, very well for darker flesh. Um, since 
I want mine to be a little bit more pale, then I'm going to start with tan flesh and work up to elven flesh. All right, but even the tan flesh will allow me to brighten up because I'm painting with it so thinly, right, that I can still brighten up like the cheek areas. Notice that you'll see a line of, of shadows start to form below the cheek, even though I'm only using this one color. Right? And the side of the gut here is a little bit darker than, of course, that area where we built it up through the center. So we get that pre-shade that we laid down to do a little bit of work for us, even on something of this scale. So it's never a waste to go through that process, no matter how small the mini is. Right? This is a very, a very small, wafy miniature. Go ahead and brighten a little bit of the bottom of the jaw coming across the chin just to set up that shadow underneath the cheek. I don't want it too dark. You got to remember <coughs> that, especially on a female face like this, you don't want the cheekbone and laugh line and jaw line to be really distinct in most cases. There are some models where you may want it. Um, but in most cases, you don't. You're going to want to make those things very soft and subtle. Uh, women's, the curves of their whole bodies are a lot more subtle than men in general terms and won't cast the same shadow. So it doesn't matter if the model's trying to be sexy or not. It's just a, a physical attribute, and it starts even up around the cheekbones. You don't see as many women that have squared off jaws and, uh, you know, pronounced chins and very recessed uh, cheeks along the jaw intrusion spot and the laugh line. Generally, it's a lot more soft in the transitions and most sculptors will kind of carry on with that. So you want to make sure that you're not doing a hard chisel shadow. Brighten up right across the front of the stomach a little bit more. Not much of her cleavage shows, so we're not going to brighten that up too much. I think I'll treat her arms and everything else like it's just clothed. No, bingo. All right, so now we're done with tanned flesh. The base coat's laid down. Very simple, smooth. The key that you, like I said, that you're going for is just to not drag any texture into it. So paint with a thinner paint. Do uh, you know, two or three layers on it as opposed to trying to drive all the color on there uh, from the get-go. One of the big things that you'll learn all the time on here is never go after full opacity in the first brush stroke. If you do, you tend to cause yourself other problems that are harder to cure on a model of these scales. So. <laughs> Shinkai, too nice. Art Image saw the Infinity War before everybody else so that you could be the one that spoils it. I see. I see your plan. Track, you start your three year old. Oh, yeah, we heard that. Oh, God. These jokes, they're horrible. They're horrible. I love how you're not reading them. <laughs> but then that makes me go back and then I read them. Well, <laughs> I still get the surprise. Tagged, the jokes they, that they, keep on getting. They've giving. tagged you, not me. KTP, one week. You play 40K to stay clean and sober. Seems <laughs> legit. All right, next color, Barbarian Flesh. This is just the normal triad from uh, the Army Painter. Again, it's really, really simple. They cut out all the brain work that you have to do. Tan Flesh, Barbarian Flesh, Elven Flesh. It's a great triad to start with. Uh, if I'm doing Caucasian style skin, I'll either do these three as if I want it to be paler, then the elven flesh comes into play. If not, then I'll set that down and sometimes I'll back this and start with um, chocolate brown from Vallejo and that'll do darker skin. If you want to go even darker, then you can remove barbarian flesh and you can go down to like uh, cam black brown for even darker flesh so on and so forth. I don't know. I mean, you could, I guess, remove tan flesh. I think you're probably always going to want tan flesh as a little bit of an adder or something in this hue and value range. Even if you're doing like African skin tones, it started even uh, darker here. 
and went up, you're still going to want a little bit of this around cheeks and flush areas as a glaze. But as with any triad, you can slide that scale left and right, brighter and darker to change the, uh, the value of the skin that you're looking for. So, bingo. All right, so now we go in with a barbarian. Again, you'll notice all the time I'm taking most of the paint off of my brush. Seems like a waste, but what it does is guarantees the consistency of paint coming off my brush. I don't want big glops of paint coming off, so I, I remove a lot of it, but I got the right thinness, and now I'll start coming in very lightly with the Barbarian and start hitting those areas that I know I want to brighten up. So I'll start with the forehead, because I'm generally going to be brighter at the top of the model and work down. And what I want to do here is leave the hairline a little dark, so I want to try to highlight everything away from the hairline across the middle of the forehead, that whole area. But if I can, leave that hair thin shred of darkness right along the hairline, like that. Hey, Griffin83921 said I only have Vallejo skin colors. What would be a good set of colors for well, Caucasian skin? Dwarven flesh. Uh, I think Vallejo starts in with dwarven with flesh is like tanned, uh, and then elven flesh or elf flesh maybe, and then pale flesh. Um, I know I've got basic skin tone as well, or skin tone and basic skin tone are very good. Basic skin tone is very bright and pink, right? So basic skin tone is very bright. Uh, the, the skin tone from Vallejo Model Air is good. It's a little yellower. Uh, it, you know, the, uh, the dwarven in game color is very good. So dwarf skin like this. And thank you, KTP, for the sub. Is very good. KTP, thank you much. Um, 20 months. And then, That's almost yeah. two years. Dwarf is kind of like tanned. Right? A little bit. Well, actually, I guess Dwarf is more like Barbarian mm -hmm. in the air, at least. Right? And then they've got Dark Flesh, I think is what it's called. And I don't have Dark Flesh sitting here at the bench right now, I don't think. Typically, as I find a solution that works, I just kind of clear everything that's very similar to it off. But I'm a big Vallejo fan as well. Uh, but dwarf skin, uh, and then either uh, basic skin tone after that for your pale, and then whatever the tan flesh is with. I think it's just called dark skin in Vallejo. All right, but the key here, like I said, is to leave that thin band of darkness right along the hairline. Of course, you don't want to cut that in as a real hard change. So that's again where the thin paint comes in, right? If I'm doing it right, then I'll take the brush, I'll start my stroke right next to the hair, but pull it away from it so that that little dark line has a little bit of a blend into the brightness, right? If I just go and paint around the hairline like this, then I'm going to get a very hard edge where that darkness sits around the hairline and then the bright skin. And we're always trying to make sure that that's not the case. So by you know, keeping your paint smooth and thin, you avoid all that because every layer that you put on will blend nicely with the layer beneath it. Let's see how close I can get in here while we're still able to oh. focus. All right. So you can see how it gives just that hint of darkness right up along the hairline. You can see it right there. But it doesn't just show as a line. It's not like an edge highlight, right? And notice because of the thinness as I rotate the model, you know, we tend to get a really cool blending through all of those skin tones. All right, so let me see if I can maintain my hand position. Jen's gonna laugh at me. I'm the worst at when I zoom in like this. This is when <laughs> she gets to yell at me the most. All right, so again, taking taking most of the You're not move mean down. Way. No, no, I'm saying I'm, I'm looking at my thumb right now. Um, <laughs> I know. Taking most of the pain off <laughs> <laughs> Taking most of the paint off of the brush on my thumb so that when I go to the model, I don't get a real big blob of this bright skin tone. And now I'll start up on the cheek here, right? And the same way, wherever I want it darkest, in towards the, the center of the eye by the nose, and then out towards the cheek, working my brush stroke down away from the eye towards the cheekbone here, so that I'm again blending out of that darker flesh into the brightness on the cheek. 
So I will leave a little bit of color around the eye socket this way. And I'm basically going to keep sectioning off the face as that, like the cheek was an armor panel almost. Then I'll come back over here to the ear. Again, just kind of get the top of the ear. This is an elven ear, so it's going to have a little bit of a, a shadow underneath that top section. And then I'm just going to get the lobe. A comrade 5520 wants to know if the whites on the wheel thing are airbrushed or regularly brushed. Airbrushed. My pre-highlight is all airbrushed on this. This was to set up the non-metallic value and scale that I'm going to use because this would be like a non-metallic gold bladed wheel or something like that. All right, now again, I'm going to paint here on the back of her jawbone. I want a little bit of brightness on this corner, but I want the darkness up by the, the cheek. So again, I'm just going to kind of start where I want it dark and pull down to where I want it to be brighter. Like so. Now that starts to define that area around the cheek. And then I just kind of blend it till I get the right scale of darkness. Like I don't, again, I don't want it to look too manly. I don't want it to look like her cheek cuts in real far and gives a hard shadow like a, you know, like a space marine kind of cheek that looks a lot more squared off. So I'll just play around with it a bit. Maybe move a little bit more brightness up underneath the cheekbone, but always going from the cheekbone down to the jawline because I know the jawline is where I want it to be brighter. So that brush direction makes all the difference in the world. If I were to paint this the other direction, if I start at the jawline and push up towards the cheek, again, the mechanics of paint brushes are such that whenever I pull a line, it's going to leave the most pigment where I stop and lift my brush, right? So I, I make a line of paint and then I stop and end it because I've got the paintbrush touching this stop point a little bit longer. Even if it's only a fraction of a second, it's longer and so more paint comes out right here than all along here. So you got to remember that in terms of pacing yourself and choosing your brush stroke direction so that you're always brushing from the area that you want less of the color to the area that you want more of the color always. And it may seem to make perfect sense as you're listening to me say it, but I have watched countless people who don't practice that because it's just not intuitive for them yet and it will cause problems with your shading and your blends on your model. Once you get it, you understand it and you just make it what you do, it's not, it's not hard. Okay, again, I'm going to go on the nose here, but I'm going to make sure that I'm only pulling my color down from the bridge. So I leave a little shadow up at the top where the pinch of the brow is. And again, I'm using one of our new debt cords. I'm using the zero size of our new debt cord. These are the synthetic Kalinskis we just came out with last week. You saw Kenny painting with them over on Next Level Painting. I'm using the zero. I'm not as nuts as he is. He likes the really, really small brush. The X10. I pretty much made that because I knew he would get a kick out of it. Right, so again, I'm going to take these short brush strokes and I'm going to pull down from the eye to the edge of the cheek. Blending as I go. And that leaves just that subtle hint of darkness up in the eye sockets. Notice how we're already being able to see how those shadows are forming. And we haven't painted really, I mean, our first color that we laid down is quote unquote our shadow color, but now it's starting to look darker every brighter color you put on a model forces the color you put on before it if you scale it dark to bright to appear even darker than it did on the model. So a lot of people will get scared. They'll say, hey, you know, Jason, that tan flesh you used isn't really dark enough. Like I wanted it, my skin to be darker. Well, just wait because the tan flesh already looks darker than it did when we put it on the model just by placing the brighter tone on top of it. Notice how on the stomach, right? Look at the difference. Just with the bright color up top. Solway Studios, thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. With just a little bit of brighter uh, value skin tone up on the face, we notice that the tan flesh, I look like I have darker shadows on the face than I do on the belly, but the colors are exactly the same. So don't ever be fearful 
let it play out a little bit. And once you get a, you know, a triad like this for skin tones, then, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be happy with it. You can kind of stick with it. Uh, here again, I'm going to start pulling from the jawline towards the front of the chin. So up where I want it darker, up by the cheek, building and letting my paint kind of pool up right at the chin. So that naturally this area will be brighter than the beginning of my stroke. Right. And now it gives us this kind of dark island of the upper lip. I'll go in and do the same thing. Again, I want the darkness to reside over here. So I'm going to pull from that area up to the top of the upper lip. Grin says hi. Hey, what's happening, Grins? Azrael got deck cord special white and water effects. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so then just by pulling a little bit of brightness up to the upper lip, we get rid of that kind of island of darkness that was forming there that makes it look a little manly, right? Uh, on, a, on a male figure, a lot of times we'll have that shadow drop drastically on the cheekbone and it will come over to the laugh line and then run down the side of the mouth, right? Whether you're drawing male versus female, painting male versus female, hey, that's a big us. thing on the face that separates men and Tater women. Tater Gamer. Tater Gamer, <laughs> one of the best names ever. Thank you so much for that follow. Um, that's one of the big differentiations. Regardless of your jaw shape, you can get away with a, a more squared off jaw for a female if you're drawing or painting, if you then kind of smooth out the cheek to mouth relationship, the way that the nose, laugh line, cheeks, and lips come together without real hard edges and shadows in them can refine the face and push it back to a feminine look. So just be careful as you're painting because even though the sculpt doesn't have those hard chiseled features on it, by placement of your paint, you could force it to look like those shadows exist by leaving darker lines, by taking a dark flesh wash and washing it over this would uh, exaggerate the laugh line and the side of the nose and make it really, really dark as if the cheeks are really, really uh, chiseled around the nostrils. And that can make more masculine appearance on a model where you don't want it. So if you're painting like Kingdom Death or something like this or any model, right? And you want to keep it in that feminine realm. The real key is to make sure you do smooth blends and stay away from real dark shadows in an amount around that area of the, I almost said muzzle. I've been painting animals lately. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the laugh line on the sides of the mouth coming down to the lips and then underneath the cheeks on either side. Darth Jameson said, I have to say, I totally get glazing because of watching your stream. Thanks, dude. Hey, thank you. Glad it's helping. All right, so again, very, very thin. Pulling this line from underneath the cheek to the front of the chin here. Voodoo Child said, I like the Reaper dark skin triad pretty well, but the brightest highlight isn't bright enough. Well, you can always add white, or in my case, what I would suggest is adding ivory, right? If you don't have model color ivory like we use, um, the Brain Matter Beige, from uh, Army Painter works very, very well. Uh, but the, the ivories of the world, right? If I have Brain Matter Beige over here someplace. Brain Matter Beige is a little bit more white-ish, right? But very, very close, right? So Brain Matter Beige, Ivory. These colors are fantastic mixers that you'll see me use all the time. And because they have a little bit of a yellowish hue to them, work fantastic in flesh. Whereas white starts driving you towards pale pinks and sometimes doesn't look right. Um, these colors are a necessity. Like I, I always tell everybody, if you do not have model color ivory in your paint collection, buy it. It is one of the single best colors on the market, period. Um, and like I said, Brain Matter Beige, if you already have it from Army Painter, will do the same thing. Um, but if you don't, I would I would say go out and get this. I, I stock uh, ivory probably deeper than any other color other than maybe mahogany and, and cam black brown here. Those are the three colors that I find myself using on almost every model. Um, and so it's, it's just, and the, you know, this one, the numbers are all rubbed off, but if you go on, if you're, if you're new here, we have a online store called slowfusegaming.com where we sell all these paints and all the things that you see us using our own brushes, soaps, and all that too. But we carry the model color and ivory is on there. So, uh, but you can mix this with everything. Like you could literally use ivory and the tan flesh and you could make your mid tone and your highlight from it and never have to have another color of paint. So you could do all of your flesh that you wanted. You just add 
75% tan flesh to 25 model color for your mid-tone and then reverse that, you know, maybe 50-50 for the next highlight and then maybe, you know, uh, 75 ivory, 25 tan flesh for your peaks. So if you're comfortable it, with paint mixing, you can do all sorts of crazy things. Just try to stay away from pure white when you're doing it with flesh tones. It'll help you a lot. Isn't that ivory, though, the one that you have to make sure it's the right kind yes. like model thank you babe yeah definitely and make sure it's model color ivory model not model color. air model color model air ivory is not this oh, color so. bill neary bill neary said crap i got model air ivory that's why it looks so odd oh, oh bill and you know what i'm a horrible person because i pulled that order that's the order i showed you the other day oh but yeah i showed you i showed jen that order and i said oh hey because she pulled the product and i looked and i saw model air ivory and so i just double checked real quick against the order to say okay yeah he is and that's bill neary he knows what he's doing i told her that specifically bill normally and so that's that's me <laughs> but normally I will check every order and if somebody orders Model Air Ivory, I will contact them before sending their thing out saying, hey, are you ordering this because you saw me use Ivory? Because this is the wrong Ivory. Oopsies. I didn't because Bill Neary, I trust that you're smarter <laughs> than that, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have contacted you. I looked, I specifically held it up to her and I go, oh, that's Bill Neary. He knows what he's doing. He must want that color. <laughs> so I didn't even question it. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't take care of you, man. Camera needs to take notes. The good thing is these VODs last, and I might even take this Friday one with the skin tone thing and post it up over on our YouTube channel. I try to when, I, when I've got content that I feel like you know people will pick through because I don't edit it down generally. Reaper dark skin triad, yeah. Anything that you find is cool. I mix and match. You know, I, I really like dwarf skin from uh, Vallejo. Um, but since finding the, the army color ones, or the army painter ones, they're just easy. So for Caucasian skin, I just find myself using them. All right, KTP, take it easy. I hope the baby's doing well, man. And congrats again. Oh, Bill Neary said it's good. You can use it for bone. Yeah, see, the Model Air Ivory is more of a bone color. It's like skeleton bone. So it's still a very good color. It's just not going to be able to be used for what I'm talking about as, as um, what would I say, as flexibly or as with the flexibility that this ivory from model color does. So again, back at it. Just... Add in color when I see it. I need to get notice how on this side we've got this kind of island of darkness at her cheek. We got rid of it over here nicely. We need to do the same over here because it's just hey, a little rough. Somebody likes us. Maggleby, another wonderful <laughs> name. How you doing? Pull from the cheek area. Telemachus said any ETA on the paint racks. I'm trying to reorganize my hobby area. Yeah, I should have the, the FedEx is supposed, here we go with FedEx Oy. again. The, uh, the FedEx shipment of the prototypes is supposedly going to be here on Monday. Um, and so as long, the only reason I had to prototype everything again is because we're going with a new cutter now. And so that new cutter, I needed to verify that the way the file comes off the machine is right, that it clicks together with all of the old racks, you know, people that have already bought racks and things like that. So assuming that all of that goes well, which I'm hoping it does, they've sent us photos, everything looks 100%. I just need it in my hands. And then assuming that all that is good, then I tell them, okay, start building. And then they start cutting the order. And uh, then I would assume that within like two weeks or so, we should see that order, maybe three. I'll have more info next week. I apologize that's taken so long. Our local guy couldn't do the job. Thanks, comrade, for the sub. Comrade, thank you so much. I'm going back, and as I noticed, things Oh, that was being... actually a gift from Voodoo Child. Oh, wow, awesome. Voodoo Child, thank you so much. Thank you, Voodoo. Sub gift, best gift. Just going back as I'm looking around and finding dark spots or... Smoothing it out a little bit. I very rarely paint with such a small brush for all of the work that I'm doing. And so this is a... It doesn't look very small on the camera. It is a very, very small brush. We're getting your hat. 
Oh, sorry. Where are you? Sorry. Yeah. Now it's starting to come together. Find a better brush angle for right back here. Again, I it may not look like it, but I am pushing my brush. I'm using the side of the point now and going away from the ear towards the cheekbone as I'm applying color. And then I'll go away from that spot where the ear meets the side of the temple and pull towards the point mm -hmm. of the ear. So I get a little bit of darkness right in here by the temple when I can. And then I want to do the same thing. I want to kind of get low under the cheek here and pull from the cheek down that jawline again, just like I did on the other side. And it's the thinness of the paint that's going to give us that that blend that I'm looking for and keep it from creating like a solid line even though technically I'm painting a line I'm just not doing it straight away I'm kind of budging it with my brush strokes We can still pick up the sweep of the cheek there, but it doesn't pinch and get too dark around the sides of the mouth, which is what we're trying to avoid when we're doing female faces. All right, same thing over here. We pick up the shadow as it goes back towards the ear, a little bit at the temple. And then, of course, the forehead with that little bit of shade in at the hairline. Go real quick and do a little bit of highlighting on the breast area and the stomach. Too bright in here because the clothing has got a lot of shadow that it's going to toss on the model right in this area. So, right there in the Well, huzzah, huzzah. I'll just throw back my legs and pollute my britches. Thank you, Darth Jameson. Darth, thank you so much, my friend. Oh, that one's Grenz. <laughs> Is that Grenz? <laughs> Gift from Grenz. Look at you guys. Thank you, Grenz. Yes, everyone's generous tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Enjoy those gifties. gifts, guys. Pay it forward. Awesome. Thank you so much for the gift givers and the gift receivers as well. I'm going to stop my brush stroke, as you can see. I'm going to leave this little line of shadow here, as subtle as that may appear. But I'm going to notice how I'm pulling away from the clothing towards the belly. And then right here, because the sculpt has a little bit of a dip, and the female form does too, when it comes in, the hip is actually higher than, you know, kind of that belly button area a lot of times. So where the hip and the rib cage and all come together, there's usually a little bit of a shadow line here, depending on how much she works out. Right. She looks like she works out. So I'm I'm pulling brightness down towards just above the belly button here, leaving a little bit of darkness, and then starting right below that, and same brush stroke, pulling brightness towards the bottom of the belly button now, so that I get that little bitty shadow that you'll see shooting off to the left there. Right. That'll give a little bit more definition to what is otherwise a fairly not you know inconspicuous sculpt down here. There's not a lot of definition to her, and which is fine. This could actually be her workout. Spinning her disc thing? Yeah, yeah, and like lifting up her legs like that. It looks like she could be like, I don't know, running in place maybe. Or oh, yes. Some sort of dance move? Yeah, it could be. Sort of crazy dancing Pilates. Just, yeah, she, those could be workout clothes. Same thing over here. Pick up just a little bit of brightness. Down low. 
just gives a little, it doesn't create like a wrinkle. I don't want it to be too dark. I don't want to make it look like there's a roll there, but you know, it gives a little bit of an indention on the stomach, even though the model doesn't have it, that I can give that little shaded line to. Just gives it a little bit more depth, a little bit more realism, since the sculpt is kind of bland right in through there. Next color. Now this is one of those where you get tired of hearing me say it, but the brighter the colors go that you use, the less of them you need to use to have a really big effect. And you'll see that with Elf Flesh, because the next one is Elven Flesh that we're going to use. And this Elven Flesh is going to be really, really bright compared to the other two. So I have to be very careful. I have to be very thin with it so that I don't look like there's just a big bright splotch of paint on the cheek or the nose or wherever. Even if what you're trying to do is create pale skin, I have to be careful with the placement now. And I'm going to do that and get my confidence by painting really, 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 really thin. All right, so notice how that's the paint that I'm going to be using. Same thing, I'm going to start up here at the forehead, but now I'm going to pull further away from the hairline. Just kind of right here along the brow at first. Get that set up almost like an edge highlight, if you'll notice. All right, so you'll see I've got that real bright line, almost looks like uh, I'm doing an edge highlight. Right there, you can see it, right? It looks more like a solid line across that brow. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go back and go now from the hairline and pull into that line that I made across the brow get my blend and because I'm working so thin it's barely gonna put any paint on the model at all all it's gonna do is smooth that edge I'll stipple a little bit extra right in where the brow line comes together and that'll start to blend all that back out Uh, Tater Gamer wants to know if you have any tips for first time mini painting other than making sure the paint isn't super thick. Is, is in addition to making sure what? The paint isn't super thick. Oh yeah, so thick paint is a huge thing. Um, obviously brush stroke, the kind of things that we, we tend to uh, forget about, the mechanics of painting. Um, and I'm not a trained painter. I'm self-taught. So when I say all this, if you're a uh, you know, like a fine art trained painter, don't cringe too bad, right? I, I, the only class I ever failed in school were art classes. So the, uh, the key for me is understanding your brush stroke, the things like I've been talking about with regards to, like right now, when I wanna highlight this cheekbone, making sure that I'm pulling my brush stroke from where I want it darker, which is up towards the eyeball, down towards the tip of the cheek. so that it blends as I go, but I don't put too much bright paint in where it's gonna interrupt my shadows, right? Because right now I'm thinking in terms of brightness along the brow, the cheek, the nose, and the top of the ears, right? And then I'll take a look at it and see. So in, in terms of what I'm doing right now, it has an immediate impact, but it's true for everything from just simple base coats, um, making sure that you're not painting with a very heavy hand because the heavier you push on your brush, the more it spreads the paint on the surface and allows the, the uh, bristles of the brush to move that paint and leave streaks. So, you know, being able to get used to a light weight on your, your brush stroke is always a good thing. Um, you'll never find a complaint when painting miniatures about having a lighter hand than a heavier hand. Uh, of course, that's not the same if you're painting canvases. Um, but stuff like that, but thin paint, uh, don't worry so much about the brands if you're just starting out. Uh, we talk a lot about, you know, everything from the most expensive paints that are mini amazing miniature paints to the most inexpensive stuff from like Hobby Lobby. Um, all of it can work. Some of it just takes more work to make it do what you need it to do. The miniature paints are going to be better because they're formulated in their texture to be in our world of painting 3D sculptures. Um, so I'm always a big fan of Vallejo. 
Uh, we're working on our own paint line right now. Um, so, you know, I, I would stick in that world if you can, but if you don't want to jump off, you know, with both feet and spend the money, because they are a little bit more pricey, don't feel bad about starting with like Hobby Lobby paints. Um, and then just focus on getting consistency with them, painting thin, you know, I'll, I'll kind of show you here real quick on my palette. The palette cam's not working today. All right, open it. Uh, let me grab a brush and no, oh, there's none of that left. So I'm going to put a little bit of a darker color so you can see the impact of how I thin. Is that still wet? Holy hell. That's from yesterday. That's still wet. That's the, um, um, or not from yesterday. That's from Wednesday. That's two days ago. That's the, uh, the AK drying retarder, <laughs> the acrylic drying. It retarder. works. It works. It keeps it from drying. The drying retarder does not evaporate in Arizona. <laughs> Proof live on stream. All right. So I load my brush up fully with water and then I come over here and the thinness that I'm painting at, and I don't suggest trying to do this as your first starting, but to just give you an idea, I come out with a wet brush full of water and I just grab a little bitty tail of paint out of that, that uh, drop, right? And so I'll pull this and I'll start painting as if it's watercolor, right? So I'll keep just touching my brush to the edge of the paint droplet and notice how it'll keep pulling, see that paint pulling out of the droplet every time I do that? a little bit more pigment draws down. So that's my measure. I look at this and I say, okay, is that what I'm gonna look for? No, that's not gonna be opaque enough. So I come up here and just tap and see how more pigment draws out into my water. And then I look and see, okay, what about that? Nope, sometimes I'll draw a lot more. If I know I'm, you know, I'm way away, then I'll draw a lot more pigment out into my water. And then I look and I say, okay, is that the opacity I want? Okay, great. So find whatever makes sense to you for thinning your paint. And generally a method like this is going to get you further than just taking a bunch of water and dumping it in a big droplet of paint and trying to do it like this, right? That's why I show you this. Uh, a lot of people, when they go to thin their paints, will put paint on the palette and then try to thin the entire drop. It's much better to try to take the drop and use it as your source material and then pull from it and blend out here and get the mixture that you want away from it so that you can always go back and get quote unquote pure paint to change, right? The fluidity and the opacity of the paint that you're using. So that's a lesson that I, I tend to teach people early on so that they get used to that. As you build up confidence to paint thinner and thinner and thinner, then you're going to find your own method for what thinness means to you. Some people paint, you know, like I do, or even thinner, uh, believe it or not. And some people like thick paint. Uh, if you're going to be doing, you know, lots of uh, two brush blending or uh, wet blending on your model, you're gonna want paint that's thicker like this because it won't mix on the model right if it's this thin. So there's variations on a theme that all kind of have to do with what you choose as your comfort zone for painting as you grow in the hobby. Um, but just don't be scared. You know, we teach fearlessness around here. Just try it. Um, it. The one thing is if you're consistent in painting thin, you can always go back and fix whatever you've quote unquote messed up on your model and you don't have to strip the paint. I see all these Facebook posts. Everybody wants to know how to strip paint off their model, you know, and I'm like, I just want to teach everybody, reach out and, and poke mm -hmm. them in the brain and say, just don't paint thick paint and you never have to strip your models. I've repainted models three and four times as demo models on the stream and never strip them because the paint's thin. And for me, that's a confidence boost because it's like, I don't care if I mess up on this model because it's real easy to just put a little bit of brush primer on it again and go after it all over the top. So if I could give you any you know big pointers as you're starting out, it's that. You know, get used to painting thin, whatever that word means for you. Just don't paint out of the bottle, kind of. And, uh, and you know, start gaining that confidence. I think that was new information for Comrade. What's that? Well, the, what you just showed. Because you said this is mind-blowing. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Every now and then we say it in the right way and people get it. We try to, I repeat myself a ton of times on stream, trying to find different ways to say the same thing. And it's reiterations of the same theme over and over and over again because eventually it will clue in with people. And I'm not trying to teach you a way of painting. There's not a, there is a probably a slow fuse method of painting that if you wanted to paint something exactly like I did, you just follow what I do and you come up with that way. 
But more than that, what I try to teach here is what happens when you treat paint in a certain way, what happens when you stroke the, the brush in a certain way. That sounded really dirty. Uh, you know, what happens when you use all of these techniques and what you can do to make them comfortable for you. Every artist is different, and there's as many ways to do art as there are people with brushes and miniatures and paint and canvases and wood and drills and you name it. So creativity has no bounds. So don't feel like you have to do exactly what I do. Ask me the kinds of questions that you're seeing people ask in chat if you're new to it and stick around and hang out with us. We do this three times a week and just ask, say, hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm picking up this model. Uh, I want to have flesh colors like I see on this. You know, what would I do? And uh, I can show you everything from how to mix paints uh, to get hey, colors that you can't buy, us. things like that. So, one hundred Anthony, what is going on? Thank you for that follow. But there are some simple practices that I tend to say, oh, I like, it makes sense, right? The earlier you start in with them, then the better your painting long term will be because you start with better habits and you can make better decisions. You know, I think that's true of learning anything. You know, if you're going to learn how to, how to, you know, uh, play music, right? One of the first things you probably ought to do is learn how to read music, which I never did. Um, because then you, the world opens up to you for what you're capable of doing with instruments and what instruments you can play and who can teach you how to play them because you can read what they're doing and you speak a common language. So in art, it's no different, you know, these kind of graphical arts, it's that there are common languages for, you know, thinning your paints and, and uh, things like glazing and blending and mixing and all of those things come together. And if you make those part of your repertoire and your toolbox early on, hey, then brands us. of paint and things start to matter less. You, could, you find yourself having confidence sitting down and doing just about anything with any paint. SRJ, what's going on? Thank you so much. All right, so again, I'm just highlighting the cheeks, the forehead, and the nose right now, and then I'll take a look because my chin was already a little bright. I, I layered the chin up with the barbarian flesh, right? So I want to make sure that I don't get the chin too bright because her, her chin is kind of in towards her neck and not pointed out. She's not throwing her chin out, so it shouldn't be the brightest thing on her face. So I'm just gonna stick with the nose uh, and the cheeks. And now you'll start to see, right, as I put this brighter color on, like I said, now her laugh lines are starting to poke back out, right? Because the, the brighter color is going to drive those shadows to appear even darker. So I have to then start making the determinations. Is that gonna be too dark? Do I wanna go back over that? For me right now, I think this is fine. This is kind of where I want it to be. Right? She still maintains a, that feminine look. We, haven't, we don't have real dark lines around the outside of the mouth that give it that masculinity. Right? And I'm getting the skin to be fairly pale the way I want it. So I'm pretty happy right now. Oh, that's going to be too much. Notice how I just went over on the palette, got some paint, and when I come over here to knock it off on my thumb, that's too opaque. So I know that my paint isn't thin enough on the palette. So I'll add a little bit more water to it. You know, my thumb is not just a way to, to alleviate the blobs off of my brush. It's also a good tester. So I can come now, and when I put paint on, I can test and see, okay, that's more like it. It separates and gives me that, that transparency now rather than being full opaque like that one. Tip of the nose. Yeah, I'm not wanting to go back onto the chin right now. I feel like we're good. I'm just going to, again, draw the brush from inside the well of the eye and the cheek out to the tip of the cheek. From uh, Train Rex said, as another new painter, big thanks to Sophie's for the giveaway last year. I found the biggest help when I started was switching from cheap brushes to sable brushes. Yep, or a good brush that will, you know, help work when working with thin paint. That's a good point. We had somebody ask uh, in Kinney's stream when we were talking about our new brushes, which is what I'm using here. This is actually a synthetic uh, that I'm using, and we've developed a synthetic that is what we call a synthetic Kalinsky, and uh, it's our, our prime synthetic Kalinsky debt cords is what we're using tonight, and this is a, a number zero. It's a super detail brush. Right, but it acts as a Kalinsky. It has the same snap as a natural hairbrush, and more importantly, it maintains the flow of paint off of the brush like a natural hair does. Uh, I mentioned it at the beginning of the stream. One of the things in the past that have dissuaded people from using synthetics for their blending um, and you know anything other than like hard edge detailing, 
um, uh, texture work, things like that, like our utility synthetics are big brushes, like the tank brush, right? That's a great use for a synthetic because this much synthetic or this much Kalinsky sable would cost you probably $80, right? This brush would be somewhere between, I don't know, 40 and $80, depending on the quality of the hair. So that's kind of out of my scale. I don't feel like it painting miniature. We need that because we don't use these brushes for anything detailed anyway. So a synthetic makes a great uh, brush for that. You're usually not using a super thin paint when you paint with a brush this size. Synthetic is the answer. When you start getting down into detailing brushes, stuff like what we're doing with the face, the traditional synthetic blends that are out there are basically, it's just plastic, right? Um, and so they don't release paint the same way that a natural hair brush will, whether it's weasel hair like the sables, uh, whether it's oxen ear hair, uh, squirrel, horse, there's all sorts of haired brushes. Some of them don't, some of them are made for texturing, right? They're coarser hair. But the key to all of them is that they tend to release the paint better and more consistently throughout the course of your brush stroke. So from the point you touch the, the paintbrush down to the surface to the point you lift it, if you keep a steady pressure during the course of that, your line will not or should not, in the case of most natural hair brushes, should not vary in line width as you go. Whereas with most synthetics, it will have a tendency as you thin your paint to kind of be blotchy. It'll release paint sporadically along the length regardless of the brush pressure because the synthetic hairs release paint. It's like it's more slippery as the paint thins out. The natural hair brushes have a better capillary action, retain more paint, release it better based on pressure. These of our uh, synthetic Kalinskis, we've managed to kind of break that mold. And now we have a synthetic that will release paint like a natural fiber hair. And I couldn't be more excited if you've been paying attention or if you're, even if you're new here, um, we've been painting this guy, right? Oh, wrong direction. This is a bust of Dumas is his name. This is a demon, right? And so we've been painting him. I started painting him down at uh, Kingdom Con in San Diego a few weeks ago now. And uh, it's, uh, it's all done with these synthetics, 100%. I haven't used a natural hair brush on this model, and I've not had one ounce of problem with being able to glaze so that I get really cool, uh, you know, nice blends, very subtle transitions between my colors. Uh, whether it be something as abrupt as purple on top of my grayish green skin or whether it's on doing like our non-metallic metal workup, you know, where I'm, I'm doing smoother blends over longer distances between the colors. So the synthetics have been able to do just about anything I've asked them to so far. And I've forgotten that I'm not just using our natural sable brushes because we also make Kalinsky sable brushes. Um, and I've, when I'm using these synthetics, the, the, I think the best thing I can say is I forget that it's a synthetic brush as I'm using it. It's that simple. Right? It has the snap of a Kalinsky, the paint control of a, of a Kalinsky, everything. So I'm super happy with them. So there, end of advertisement. <laughs> I get to teach and advertise our products at the same time. And I posted the link directly to the deck hoard, So nice. check them out. And uh, we are going, a lot of people have been asking, so are we going to make um, larger brushes in the in the same material and the answer is yes uh, we are already well on our way to getting that done so those will be forthcoming all right i want to get a little bit of brightness but i'm going to thin it way way down or down along the belly i don't want this to compete with the same brightness as the forehead i'm going to use the same color and i'm just going to do very very light amount kind of a V shape right here at the top above the belly button. I'm not going to layer it up too much at first. I'm going to see how that brightness builds up, how I like it. I'm going to do a little bit on the inside of this breast, only her left side though. The right one is, is up has the, the fold of the clothes comes further over. Notice how as you're looking at her, you can't see the cup of the, the right breast, but the left one does protrude a little bit. So I'm gonna give it a, just a little bit brighter value there, and then build a little bit more up down here on the stomach. Again, I'm not pushing it all the way down to where we did our last color. I'm just maintaining a really tight area with it And blend it back just a little bit so that I just brighten up the belly there a little bit on the top, but it's not competing with the forehead. 
Right, it gives us a little bit of shine, but not too much. The same thing, the inside of that breast, just a little bit. Right, and my, my goal is to maintain a transition from, you know, brighter up at the top, darker as we transition down the, the model, right? This helps people wonder why I do this. I'm not trying to psych you out here, but it keeps the, uh, the white balance even on the camera. Right, so you'll notice now exactly what I'm seeing and you see how the skin tone is brighter up at the forehead, but then starts to give me that shift down to darker as we reach down to her mid rift area, right? I'm not trying to build up a lot of brightness down here because the whole composition of the model needs to be brighter at the top, darker at the bottom. And now it's just picking how dark it goes to tell the story you're looking at. Bye comrade. You out of here comrade? Weekend. Yeah, it's 4.15 a.m. Oh geez, 4.15, thanks for hanging out. Have a wonderful evening and weekend. Look forward to seeing you again sometime. Bill, Bill Neary said, I'm painting a dark gray near black fabric primed black. Any advice on workup? I'm thinking base of necromancer cloak, but is that dark enough? Painting a dark gray near black fabric. Prime black. You're thinking base of necromancer cloak, but is that dark enough? I feel like necromancer cloak, if you go in thin enough will work. I use that black gray on a lot of things. And it's also, you know, take Necromancer cloak and add a little bit of black to it to start maybe if you're, if you're fearful and then work up from there. Cause you can always, if that's generally what I tell people, if you're, if your prime coat is, is black, your next color up, it, like, especially if you're doing black, cause Necromancer cloak's pretty dark, but it has a, it has a tinge of gray to it. It's great. Right? And when you put it on the model, it will be more gray than black. So do 50-50 black and necromancer cloak for your first layer, and that'll help give you that transition from black to necromancer cloak as you use it straight from the bottle, you know, or you go with it 100% and just thin it down. But yeah, I think it would work great. Uh, did you read Grins that he uh, he gave our brush soap to a lady? Oh, who's yes. classically trained? Yes. So <laughs> Love how there you go. Loves the bristles. It makes them so soft. That's all you. Yeah. Jen makes all of our brush soap by hand here in the studio, so that's all her. Give her a beard. <laughs> All right. So again, we're getting pretty close to what I would do. Now, the, the thing with this model, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm pushing it pretty far with brightness. Uh, anybody that knows us knows that I would not normally paint my final highlights and tones on flesh without also knowing what color all of my clothing is going to be. Because now if I if I continue to do the skin and I get it quote unquote finished, I it can change the direction on some of my other colors. You know, like if I wanted her, if I started out wanting her clothing to be very dark blue, I might find a problem because if I put dark blue down, dark blue is gonna make her flesh look even brighter than it does right now. Because we're, mm -hmm. we're basically comparing the brightness, the value of her skin to the rest of the model. And the rest of the model is all these kind of whites, grays, and blacks. As we add darker colors on, it could make that skin look brighter than I really want it. But for the purpose of showing off what I'm doing here, I'm gonna to continue to go ahead and work it up and show you kind of what I would do to reach completion. Just understand that in a lot of cases, you won't want to paint your flesh um, or, or brighter parts of a model all the way to completion before you've done at least the base coats of all the other colors that you wanna do. Uh, color has a weird relationship in miniature like this that it might not have to uh, the classically trained eye or to just the way your brain thinks about it in the real world. You know, you can think about bright colors and dark colors next to each other in the real world and it doesn't cause us any problems, but at miniature scale where we're trying to pick out tiny details, I mean, you know, look at the, the her face compared to my well, forefinger, huzzah, huzzah. right, or my thumb, right? My we're painting tiny stuff here, right? Ultra Mega, three months, thank you. Um, when we're looking at this scale, our brain and our eye have a hard time distinguishing some colors apart and also will blur out details if the colors that sit next to one another are too bright and too dark. Yes, it gives us contrast, but it can eliminate details. Like I could lose this braid in her hair completely if I'm not very careful with what colors sit alongside it because it has all this neat detail of the knot and the braid, but that detail and that shading, the shading in her face could go away if I paint this a real dark color for all of her skin and it makes all that radiate, you know, really, really bright again. So just be thinking in terms of completion 
uh, on a model and the phases that we go through, I always say don't ever finish any one area of the model until all the other areas of the model are similarly ready to be finished. Does that make sense? So I'm always painting everything up. Again, we'll bring our demon back online here, right? And nothing is done on him. It's all at like 70%-ish because I'm testing colors. I'm building up the colors the way I want. And then I'm, you know, I get my skin to like 70% and then I move on to the green of the necklace. I get the green of the necklace to like, well, that's probably done. The necklace is probably done because I was farting around trying to make that malachite and I really got happy with it. So I feel like that's probably done. But now I got to move on and get the metals lined out. And so those are probably 70% done that we did this on stream, just trying to get the balance of bright and dark on there. Then I'll move on to like the horns and then I'll do, of course, this other shoulder. And then once all of it is kind of sitting in that 60 to 70% range of completion, then I start to make my final decisions so that I can see what is going to work. Because right now this is too bright. This metallic is too bright against the skin and everything. It makes everything in the skin appear way too pale. So I'm going to have to either darken my skin so it doesn't look as, as super pale as it is right now or darken the metallic. And I'm going to darken the metallic because I really wanted it to kind of be more like this anyway, right? Because now the skin looks different against the metal that isn't so bright. It's more dark than bright than it does here where it's more bright than dark. Is the other shoulder the same? It's the same. It's going to be the metal? same metallics. It's just that this one had a, a super ton of detail with all the teeth and the face and the skull. Yeah. But I'm just trying to get the color right uh -huh. here. And that's another good point that, that Jen alludes to is that I'm never going in. And even though these are going to be the same color, notice how I didn't even really base coat anything other than the burnt umber for the golds on this. I, I went through all the process of, of working my gold up to 60 or 70 percent finished and my silver up to 60 or 70 percent finished on this one side so that I can make the decision if I even like this or not before I've spent all the time to do it over here. So as you paint more and as you're trying to figure things out on a model, if it's a model that you've painted a hundred times, you don't have to do all these things. You just go in and you paint it. But as you're doing and attacking your first model, never be afraid to just test something. I do it all the time. You know, test a skin color. Maybe that's what we're doing here. Maybe we test the skin color and see if we like it for a whole army that we're going to paint of these same dudes. And uh, if we don't like it, then we can change it on this one model before you line out 20 dudes and base coat them all the same color. You know, get one and test your colors on it and see if it works. And then when you're happy with it, you know, you, now you know your process, then do all 20 of the rest of them. That kind of stuff. God, this model's tiny. After painting at the scale we've been painting at, I've been painting like 1 20th, right? So the, the next human that we're painting is this 1 20th that's going to be like our tank girl for our, 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 oh. our scenario. And you get She's the... like a giant. Yeah, you get the feel of, of it working at different scales. You have <laughs> to kind of think in terms of different things as well because we would need to use a lot more color on her to get the same depth on the face that we have at this smaller scale, right? Because there's just more surface area to cover. And we can do a lot more cool stuff with her too because she's bigger. But I've been painting a lot at like larger scale lately and it throws your brain off. You're like, good God, what is this small stuff I'm having to paint? All right, so let's go in now and what do I want to do? Oh, I got to put a little bit of brightness on the back of this ear. And then all my yapping, my paint has dried up. <laughs> Too thin. Just right. Pretty wicked mold line right here on the side of her neck that I didn't ever see. I'll have to remain cognizant of that. She's got this line that runs right there on her neck. Mm. It's oh, tiny. Yeah. It's always frustrating when you see that after you've started painting the bulk of a model. Now I've got an area right here on her cheek. Where, like I said, as it comes down into the laugh line, we're starting to pick up a little bit too much darkness right here. So I'm going to go back a level to our Barbarian flesh. This is the paint that we used as our second color. And rather than try to use the highlight color that I'm using right now, which is the Elf flesh, don't try to 
you know, brighten your dark areas with that because you can throw the whole balance of the model off. I'm going to go back one color with the Barbarian Flesh. And I'm going to come right in here on this cheek. Just kind of use that to sink that darkness back a little bit. I use the same brightness of, uh, of highlight and I go underneath the shadow area with it, then you'll just kind of lose that shadow entirely. And that's not the goal. Now, after I've done that, I may want to come back. And do a little bit more brightness right on the tip of the cheek again so that I know I don't have that. Second color on there, too bad, and that brings hey, it back to somebody what we want. likes us. Thanks for the follow, Moses. Moses. Thank you so much. All right, so now she's starting to look pretty good. We've got to start thinking about eyes and uh, the hair. I'm not going to paint her eyebrows, I don't think, because I don't know about. I would have to paint the hair color, but the eyes and the facial tones and skin tones are next and even on a model this small a lot of times we talk about bringing life into a model this is as bright as i would take her right now um and but in order to breathe a little life into it a triad of skin tones doesn't necessarily do that right we're always talking about if you look at your own skin right mine has all sorts of colors on it because i have uh, an affliction um but even if you just look at your own skin you get pinks right around the spots where there's pressure so if i press my fingers down i get that blood all those capillaries starting blood vessels start to show through the skin there right so i get my pinks right i get a little bit of green around the vein areas uh the brighter colors are the skin tones that we've already painted with right but we get all of these other colors in there and for caucasian skin the big one that stands out all the time is the pinkish color so you want to try to find a way on your models to bring that into play to give it life. That's what makes people look alive, right? If you're going to look and say, oh, wow, you look dead today. What's the one thing that people are missing <laughs> when they look at that? Color. We say that when you get ill, you know, you're sick, the color drains uh, out of you, yeah. you know, and, and you get that feeling that when you look at somebody, you go, oh, are you feeling okay? So when you paint your models, be careful of that too, because just even the coolest triad of colors, right? can be like, oh, are you feeling okay? Mm -hmm. Because there's not enough of a life involved in them. And so we go to find, uh, you know, in this case with her, uh, just one other color because she's tiny. So I don't think we're gonna need too much. I wouldn't spend a lot of time doing a lot of greens on her like I might on a larger model, right? But uh, I have a color that I love and somebody in chat, I'm sure will jump out and say it, but I have a particular color that I use more than any other for this. Mahogany. No, it's called Wasteland Soil. Oh. Ah, 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 for this. But I didn't figure it was really mahogany. <laughs> mahogany, you can use mahogany. As a matter of fact, in our skin tone card, I show how through using the Vallejo skin tone. Oh, you know what? When somebody asked what I should use for Vallejo skin oh, tones, this whole thing go. is done with it. Yeah. It's dwarf, parasite, brown, and basic skin tone will do your uh, your tanned colors, and then use an ivory basic skin and flat flesh along with that. We'll do it. These are all Vale. These are all the Vallejo colors. Um, but notice how I do use mahogany in here, right? I go in with mahogany. What are you looking at? Darkness just noticed something that I didn't notice. It's off. Aww. For the first time, it's off. It in the middle of the night last night, I was sleeping funny on it, I think, and my hand hurt so bad that I woke up in kind of a half sleep and took it off. Oh, wow. And, uh, and then I forgot to put it on. Okay. I thought about that right before the stream. When I saw darkness on there, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I did. I had to finally take it off. I think I was sleeping with like my hand under my pillow. Darkness on made me a chain mail, made both of us chain mail bracelets. And I have not taken mine off once since I got it. And that's the truth. 
That and last night I was sleeping weird and I think the clasp was digging into a part of my arm mm -hmm. and cutting off blood flow or something. Mm -hmm. And I woke up and my hand just was pounding and felt bad. And I was like, oh my God. So I took it off and I fell back asleep and didn't even think about it. Right before the stream, <laughs> I saw him in the stream and I was like, I forgot he's going to call me out. And sure enough, he did. <laughs> Bastage. Um, so yeah, but mahogany can be used to mix with like dwarf mm. flesh and give you a really good life kind of color to it. Again, with the basic skin tone in mahogany. So mahogany is a great color for this. Okay. It's just that once I found wasteland soil, I kind of didn't have well, to mix anything work. anymore because yeah. it works great right out of the bottle. So, you know, we, uh, we change our tactics as we find new and cool things. And wasteland soil is one of those new and cool things. So I'm going to take a little bit of wasteland soil. And I'm going to run this uh, about as thin as possible. We call this dirty water glazing. Uh, the kind of consistency that I'm going to use here, I'll, I'll pull it back over here just so you can see it, um, is going to be indicative of what I was showing you earlier as more of a watercolor method of painting. So I'm going to load my brush completely with water. I'm going to pull a little tail of paint out here. And what I'm going to be painting with is about like that. Dirty water glaze, we call it. All right. So this is all the pigment that I want on the brush to be painted on the model right now. Right, not a lot because obviously too much of this color looks like you know hooker makeup or something, right? So that's not what we're going for. We're not painting lipstick all over just yet, right? Again, I'll get rid of a lot of it. But what I want to do? Come on, camera. There we go. What I want to do now is start bringing a little bit of this pink into things like right here at the temple. Around the outside of the cheek. Hey, somebody likes us. Hey, thank you for that follow. Fraley 17 or Traley? Fra it looks like Fraley. Fraley. All right, so see, immediately, just a little bit of pink on the back side of the cheek where the ear and the temple all come together is a great spot to do this on small miniatures like this. <laughs> right, because it helps redefine that shadow that forms there, but it also gives it a really cool shift in hue without being makeup. Right, mm -hmm. because you can do this for men as well. Right now, also I want to do it along the hairline above the temple area over here on the side. Voodoo Child said, uh, "Slifus uses water, then thinks about a color for three seconds, then applies the water to his models. That's yeah. his technique." And then there's a magic that somehow <laughs> makes that look like color on the model. Yes, <laughs> I don't want to take the uh, the the reddish color all the way around the hairline. That'll make it look a little irritated, or like Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> so I want to be careful with that. But I do want to grab some more and get this area of the temple right above the temple and brow line over on this side. And same thing right at the pinch of the eye and ear and temple all coming together there. Then I want to do it right coming in from the inside of the eye down the laugh line a little. And remember, because this is so thin, you may not even really see a lot of color. And that's the goal. It's one of the hardest things to get used to is being able to find color on the model the way you want, but not seeing it because your eye is so trained, especially when painting miniatures, right? We train our eye to want to see that, that brush stroke have an effect right now. We edge highlight. We want to see that edge highlight really pop right now. And with this technique, when we're glazing these soft colors back on, right? Notice how if I put it on and there's a lot of red in there, you can see how she could look irritated real quick, right? Lots of red in the pinch of the nose and all that would make her look angry. I'm not looking for anger, but you can see. Look at that little bit of pink that found its way into the laugh line there mm -hmm. and what a dramatic effect it has. That little bit of pink right up at the top of the brow and right along the ear, right? We don't have to use a lot but it goes a long way towards bringing life into the skin there. Well, huzzah, huzzah. I'll just throw back my legs Thank and you, my britches with delight. Ten freaking months, Telebadger. <laughs> thank you. Nobody likes us that long, but thank you for pretending. Can you move up a little bit, please? Thank you. Up here? Yep. Sorry, I scooted back on my standing pad a little bit. Bring a little bit out of the laugh line to the bottom of the cheek. I don't want to do the whole like rosy painted cheek thing too much. But there is going to be a little bit of red right around the laugh line of the mouth, underside of the cheek, where the lips purse. 
week. So. And now our face starts to look alive as opposed to, I mean, it didn't look bad at first, but these little subtle hints that you can do will push it to that next level. Stealing. Now I'm, now I'm being sued by Kenny too. <laughs> like it's got spiky bits and now we're at the next level. It's sued by Kenny and Rob. Right, one area that I really like to get is right at the back of the jaw, at the neckline. And go a little bit more with that. Of course, don't want to get full on redneck. <laughs> right, we can get a lot of color there. Doesn't show for us over here as much. All right, we can knock off a little bit and then just kind of go on the neck underneath. You'll get a little bit more blood showing through in those areas. And then the lip, of course. The bottom lip. I try not to paint top lips. All right, unless your model has some specific feature that shows the top lip you know like it would have you know bright lipstick on it or something i try to stay away from top lips uh, it can make things look really really funky a little bit more on her bottom lip here What is this emote? Which one? From Kenny. The dumpster fire one? Yo dog hot garbage. Huh. <laughs> it's the, the universal symbol, symbol for dumpster fire. <laughs> so that's it good. looks so much more feminine. It Seriously, when you just had that first coat, it looked like a man's face. Yeah, right? Yeah. The first coat of, of skin tone? Yeah, yeah, just the plain, whatever, the first color. Uh, yeah, the first tan color. flesh. Yeah. 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 And like I said, smooth blending, not finding those hard shadows in there, not pushing the laugh lines too dark. You don't want to see that traditional triangle around the mouth too much on a woman. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the sculpt could call for it if she's screaming, then yeah. the skin is folded, and it makes sense. But if it's just at rest, you don't want to find those sharp folds in the face, which is why I don't typically want to wash too much of a woman's face. Uh, with inks or washes or dark glazes, things like that. I'd rather build up from a dark base and highlight it up as we go. All right, so there we got that. Now we'll go in and we'll do a little bit of this down low. Whereas we didn't highlight much of her breast area or the belly area, we will not stray away from doing a little bit of blood under the skin buildup and the cleavage. <laughs> Kenny said all, all minis have a hot, hot garbage phase in between whip and final. Here, just a little bit as it goes through this area where the hip and abdomen abs would be. Build up a little bit of color right there. The other side. And bingo. Now, just that little <laughs> hint of pink gives us a lot more life to her than before, right? Notice how we've got that little bit of pink intruding into the shadow that I laid down there. Right? Makes a huge difference, not too much color. You don't have to put a lot of paint. You're not you're not painting it so that you see a line. I mean, I'm literally, guys, I'm using paint that as I'm putting it on my thumb to clean to clear the brush, so well, to speak. Huzzah, I mean, huzzah. you can't even tell there's oh, paint wow, there. Yeah. Roll back my legs and pollute right? my britches with delight. Dark Comedy, 16 months. Thank you so much. Another lying liar who lies, but we love that you try. <laughs> Nobody could possibly like us that long. But notice, right? Look at how little color there is until I go over it a couple times, and now you'll start seeing it build up, and that pink shows up. And notice how that pink is just about the exact same pink that's in my skin. That's why I love Wasteland Soil so much. Right? Watch as I paint this area right here load it up more and more and more and more and more right over my own flesh and look how it does exactly the color that I'm looking for because it's so thin, right? One of the things that I always tell people and that we haven't mentioned tonight is that when you paint like this and you use paints as what we call a filter, okay? If you come from the world of photo or if you know about you know uh, photography uh, editing, they will use filters like in Photoshop and those filters will just put a very thin 
super transparent color layer over the top. Oh, that's what Instagram does. Yeah, Instagram does it and all those effects, you know, they'll put like a really a really pale blue over it and call it winter or something because it cools the whole yeah. thing down, but it doesn't take over all the colors. Yeah. The colors that were originally there still show through, but it gives it another vibe. Right, you can do um, uh, sepia tones like the old ones that make it look like an old west, mm -hmm. and drag the color completely out of it. So those filters can have a big impact on the model that you're painting. The way we tend to do it is super, super thin. When you thin an acrylic paint out to the point that we are using it as a filter, you have to always remember to use a much darker color than you want it to be. Look at wasteland soil. Out of the bottle, you're like, why would I ever use that color on my flesh? but look at it as we've glazed it. You can tell those are the same color now, but because it's so thin, it doesn't have that vibe of being super dark, right? Notice how it lays over the skin. That could be paint or that could just be an irritation mm -hmm. spot where I scratched myself, mm -hmm. right? So if I just painted it on opaque, this would look silly. This would look like makeup or war paint or something like that. So you have, still one more name. I'm doing this all for you, baby. I'm doing this all for you. Thank you, my friend, right? <laughs> Insert attempt at wit or joke about Jason's age here. <laughs> I'm not that. I am that old. Okay. So, I'm not that old. <laughs> but hopefully you get what I'm saying. So when you see me glazing, when you see me using colors as a filter, we talk about glaze a lot. Um, you'll see me using paints that I'm going a lot darker than what I really want on the model. And that's something that I can tell you all the time, go darker than what you want to see on the model. But until you actually test it and see the effects on your own, it's not something I can tell you always use this for this type of glaze. You'll learn. If I were to go in with a color that I wanted to be the, the exact color, I you know, like if I look at my hand here, press down, and I want that color, it's not that, right? But I see it in this because I've been doing it so long. So I would grab this color. But it, a lot of people will look at it and say, what do I have that's close to that? It might be this, right? Oh, look, that's the color, right? that's much more the color. So people would say, oh, I learned from Fuse that I want to put something like this on my skin so that I can bring it to life. The problem is something like scar tissue, even though it sounds right, it would work at full opacity. But if you filter it very thin, it's going to disappear entirely or be way too bright and look like cotton candy and not like blood underneath the skin. So there's a method to the madness and why I say this is the color you want to achieve this on your painting. Because if you just go in and paint this at full opacity for this color, it's going to look like paint sitting on skin, right? It's not going to look like the filter we're really wanting, which is that this red just kind of lives there mysteriously. It doesn't look like I spilled paint on myself. It's just under the skin. So to get that layered effect, go darker than you really want, paint it super thin so you don't get much of that showing, and you get the exact effect that you're looking for. This is what we use on, on damn near everything. So like... Uh, what else do I have up here? Oh, we got our Stormtrooper girl, right? So like with our Stormtrooper girl, we've done the same process, you know, and it's like exactly the same as what you've seen me do here tonight.